Okay, okay, people, I am so glad to introduce to everyone beautiful comedian, actor, and writer Nagin Farsad here at the city today. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Nagin, we have a tradition here at the count of three. We are going to sit down Got and you. we are going to scream Hua. Comprende? Okay. All right. One, two, three. Hua. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like we break the ice like that. Yeah, nice. I, I, feel, I feel like the ice was broken. Yes. Yeah, okay. the energy yeah. a little lighter yeah. than after yeah. the walk? <laughs> <laughs> it is you, for me. Now, before we, I want to get into your book, but before yes. we do, uh, do you want to, do you have any thoughts on our conversation that we were having before the break about beauty standards and media and entertainment? I mean, it's hard out there being a lady <laughs> in general, so I'll say that. Um, you know, I, obviously I think the standards are different for women, mm -hmm. uh, and I even find myself looking at dudes and being like you look great chiseled jaw you yeah. don't need anything and then I look at a woman and I'm like Let's throw on some lipstick it'll help. you know <laughs> what I mean you. and so I myself have the double standard uh, what it you know and I and, but I'm like a, a bit of a girly girl right. um, and uh, you know I my mother would like throw on lipstick earrings a beautiful dress just to go to the supermarket so yeah. that's who raised me and I feel uh, uh, you know I've kind of well Persian culture the, wi the women are very uh, um, Oh my God. Vivacious? Beautified. <laughs> yeah, they're, uh, um, they, uh, I think this was probably a true statistic. I think they have the most plastic surgery of anyone wow. in the world. Oh, or really? Like it's, that. Really it's, it's, it's between, it's between like, it's between Iran and like Mexico yeah. or something like that. No, that I think Colombia or Venezuela. Venezuela. They yeah. are yeah. way yeah. higher than Mexico. So, so yeah, Iranians are very, <laughs> uh, you know, into their appearance. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, no, you know. No, unless there is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, there's Thank nothing you. wrong with trying to like fix yourself up because it's just like you look like you don't care about yourself. You know, it's like, come on, you're gonna go out. Why in the world would you want to look like a train wreck when you're going out <laughs> to the world to see you? True. But you're right. I mean, I grew up with my grandma who was always every day she would wake up at seven or eight in the morning, throw her makeup on, and I would ask her, Abby, why, why would you like put makeup on if nobody's gonna see you? Only us. And she was like, I don't do it for anyone, I do it for myself. Yeah, it's like right. self-pride. So that to me, yeah, and that to me, you know, I learned to grow up with that yeah. idea. And when I, you know, make myself pretty, <laughs> under my standard of beauty, whatever, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's for myself, really, not yeah. for Yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy clothes, you know what I mean? Like, I, f I find it fun to, like, throw together a, you know, a, a look. Um, and so I think that's part of it. You know, if you, g if you get some kind of joy out of it right. every morning, why not? As long as you're not pressured to do it by outside forces, outside people, and outside standards, I think it's up to you and your personal. And then, your face is your full, canvas. full disclosure, mm -hmm. I am a little pressured because, you know, I'm in the business. Yeah. So I, it's, I don't feel like I can walk around looking like garbage, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. I don't feel like like that, you. you know, that I can do, you know, so there is, it's a combination. I can't pretend like I'm not affected right. by that kind of pressure. I'm definitely affected Men, by it. Men, I don't like clothing, so don't feel pressured to wear them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about the book, How yes. to Make White People Laugh. Yes. Uh, I want to know about it, and also I want to segue where, did you ever see the documentary that I forgot who made it? I think, was it Al Franken? Um, it's uh, comedy in the in the Muslim world, or do you know the documentary? Oh, uh, with, um, Looking for comedy. Looking for comedy, comedy in, in the Muslim yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw that or that, I did see that. Uh, did you have any thoughts, or does well, it correlate to what your book is about? So actually, so I made a movie um, a, a couple years ago where I rounded up a bunch of Muslim American comedians in a nonviolent way, and we <laughs> went around the country. We went to places like Alabama and Mississippi and Tennessee, you know, like places where you're like, oh, I'm Muslim in this town. Um, and so we did stand-up shows, and we caught that film, The Muslims Are Coming, um, and we got a bunch of people like Jon Stewart and Janine Garofalo and Louis Black to just say hilarious things about Islamophobia because it's so funny. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so that you know, so I, so I talk a lot about that movie and kind of um, you know in, in the book and the and um, and and what what we were trying to do there, which is essentially my entire career is a, is a series of me trying to make white people laugh and figuring it out because I want to build a bridge. And I mean, you know, and I think like you know my my Latino brothers and sisters are you know know this pressure themselves because you're just you're always trying to be like. Listen, white people, you control, you know, the government, space, the economy, wars. And if you're laughing, maybe you'll start fewer wars. Like, that's bit, bit my, my basic philosophy You should send it. your book to Donald Trump. He has to read he it. He really needs to read Absolutely. it more than anybody. <laughs>
broken up into three main categories. There's mostly wonderful people, haters, and Florida. Now, as a social justice comedian, it's my goal to convert these haters because they hate a lot of things which lead to negative outcomes like uh, racism, violence, and Ted Nugent. Um, so what I've done is I've created a highly scientific taxonomy of haters. I basically took all of the haters, I put them in a Petri dish like a scientist, and this is what I found. <laughs> oh, wow, I wouldn't <laughs> go to that TED Talk. We could, yeah, we got, that's an awesome, oh that was a TED Talk, God. right? Yeah. That's awesome. And, and that I wish we would have found out the, the afterwards, but maybe uh, we'll find that now. Um, I, I love your perspective on America, mm. uh, particularly because it's a perspective I don't see a lot in the media, and that is uh, a woman who was raised Muslim. I, know, I asked you on the commercial break, if you're a practicing Muslim, you're kind of like me. You were raised by a religion, yeah. but I'm sure you have your own, your own way of thinking of those things. Um, as a Muslim woman, how do you see the issue of Islamophobia going on right now and balance it with a lot of the instability that's coming out from the region, from the Middle East? and? Uh, like uh, you, you must have like uh, hard feelings to deal with on on either sides of, of of the situation, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really tough because what we're what we're experiencing is that is essentially a 24-hour news cycle that tends to show Muslims in a negative light. So right. anytime there's some you know bad news out of the Muslim world, mm. we're looking at like dusty dudes with AK-47s running around in the desert. You know, the, the iconography around being Muslim American mm -hmm. about around being Muslim um, is really war-based and it's really about terrorism and violence and so um, my personal goal is to say you know like I, I would like to cut off that linkage between Muslim and violent mm -hmm. um, and I'd rather you think of Muslims as like bad bowlers or you know <laughs> Muslims you know they, they t play basketball terribly whatever uh, whatever any other stereotype I would take that um, so please spread that rumor really okay. bad at bowling really terrible at basketball <laughs> Muslims um, so I think that's really what I'm trying to do is like create new link linkages even if the language linkages are ridiculous um anything's better than violence humor yeah. saves the day people yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Islam really is also does. such a peaceful religion at its core you know islam is peaceful so it's nice yes. to get back get that back into the you know rhetoric. exactly it's and, like, it's, hey, and it's hard it. when it's like all we're seeing on tv is this negative stuff even even on prestige cable right like you could totally. be watching you know hbo or showtime or whatever and they have these amazing shows and and everyone's obsessed with them and then it'll show a Muslim terrorist, you know? And so we, uh, we need to work on that. Right. So what about your encounter with Chelsea Handler? How was that? <laughs> oh, I want to know all about it, because I love her. I think she's hilarious. She's hilarious, and she's actually really trying to do something that kind of matters with this show and, and really trying to be a voice and, and really trying to kind of bring issues that are kind of hard to understand, um, and maybe we tune them out because it, they're hard to, to grapple with. Um, and she's trying to make them fun and funny and interesting, and I, I I really admire that. Speaking. Like the one she did about black people? Like yeah, the, exactly. That was hilarious too. It's yeah. all about the stereotypes. But what was the, were you on her show? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what was the episode? It, um, I I don't remember what they called it, but it you was can find an, it yeah. On you can find it on Netflix. It was like a dinner with Chelsea episode. Oh. We talked yeah. about we talked about religion right. um, and and faith and stuff like that. Do you look up to her when it comes to com comedy? And um, it's funny because I, I I reminded her early on that I have I had applied for a job at her show as a writer wow. and, uh, and and I got very close, but they rejected me. So um, I uh, even to be rejected, um, get close to you know close <laughs> enough to actually get. A personal rejection felt uh, <laughs> and then you can tell her on her face you rejected me Chelsea because that means you know you're already in touch with her which no, is well, amazing <laughs> no she's remarkable she was really lovely now the lady who didn't reject you was Hillary Clinton because you used to intern for her correct <laughs> I did, you did, I did yes I did. actually that's yeah. awesome what, are, you yeah. are you still with her okay I'm no I'm absolutely I'm absolutely with her and I mean you know it's pe pe people ask me about that internship experience and I'm like well you know I was an intern so I was kind of like the lowest rung on on the totem pole, <laughs> like they were not asking me about classified information. Um, I was in a room stuffing envelopes. Um, I gotta say, your, your your energy is very infectious. Your humor is very um, like disarming. I can imagine that you can sit down across the table for someone who completely disagrees with you, and they still enjoy talking to you. <laughs> and and the reason mm. I bring that up is, look, we deal with stereotypes in this country, and even someone who has the best intentions. A lot of the images that I that I know of of women from the Middle East is they're very serious, they're very strong, but they're yeah. fighting some sort of oppression. I don't think of a cheery 
funny, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> what, like, do you, are you breaking down stereotypes just being you? Like, well, I mean, I think that's what's funny, right? Is that there's plenty of people like me who are right. Muslim, who are fun and ridiculous, and you know, wear red glasses. Yeah. Like, that's a completely <laughs> average Muslim woman, yeah. and we have uh, built up this idea that Muslim women aren't like that, and it's crazy. And that's but what you want to cut you off for saying that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, how do you feel about being a Muslim woman in a city or an Iranian woman here in LA where there's such a huge community. Yeah, it's interesting because I actually live in New York City um, and in New York City you're sort of like in a sea of just constant diversity. Um, I think what's interesting here is like you can go to the streets of Westwood and hear, Far I mean, I'm mean, i Iranian, right, so I, can, I go to the streets of Westwood and hear Farsi and it's very like, whoa, what is happening? Uh, um, Culture. Yeah, like my people. Uh, <laughs> mi, mi gente, where have you been? Mi gente. Um, but like, uh, it, yeah, so I, so I find that interesting because I'm not normally around this many Iranians, but uh, well, listen, are you ever? Are, no, we gotta go. We gotta. We gotta go. But are you? Have you ever been around this many fun-loving Latinos? I have. Well, come I back. grew up in Palm Springs. Oh, there time. you go. Oh, no yeah. wonder yeah. she knows us. <laughs> Well, we want you back on the show very soon. Thank you for coming. We yeah. want to pick up your book you. on Amazon. They can find the book, right? Amazon, How to Make White People Laugh, all of the online things and bookstores. Awesome. Trump, read the book! <laughs>